Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's me, Henry. Today, we're gonna continue to learn the fifth chapter of the book, The Way of Life by Kazuo Inamori, Harmony with the Universe, section one until section six. Let's get started. Section one, the two forces that control life. Life is controlled by the invisible hands. There are two invisible hands in this case. The first hand is destiny. People come to the world with their own destiny or purpose, and they are led or urged to spend their life without knowing what their destiny is. Some people may hold different opinions, but I think the existence of fate is an unquestionable fact. Humans are indeed supported by a certain force. It is not influenced by one's will or thought. It doesn't care the joys or sorrows of human beings. Like a rushing river that runs through our lives and continuously lead us to the sea, so is human being powerless in the face of fate? It's not true, because there is another invisible giant hand that can fundamentally controls a life. That is the law of karma. In short. Good is rewarded for good things, and evil is rewarded for evil things. The so-called good cause produces good results, and evil causes produce evil results. This is a simple and straightforward rule in which cause and effect are directly related. Everything that happens to us must have a reason. It is nothing else, but it is from our own thoughts and actions. All these thoughts and actions become causes and produce the result. What you are thinking about and what you're doing now are all causes and will inevitably lead to some kind of result. Moreover, the reaction to this result turns into the cause of the next result. And the infinite loop of the law of cause and effect is the providence that governs our life. In the first chapter, I share that things that you don't desire in your heart can be close to yourself. That means life is as you think in your heart. This is also based on the law of karma, because our thoughts and actions have become seeds, bringing corresponding realistic results. In addition. In chapter three, I emphasize the importance of sharpening and improving the mind. This is also based on the law of causality, and noble kindness will surely bring a better life. Fate and the law of cause and effect; these two principles govern everyone's life. Destiny is a warp, and karma is a weft. The warp and the weft are woven into the cloth of our lives. Life cannot be completely controlled by fate, because the power of the law of cause and effect is all the while working. However, good deeds do not necessarily bring good results because of the interference of fate. The important thing is that the law of karma is slightly stronger than destiny. This is also a mechanical relationship between the two forces that control life. And the power of the law of causality slightly exceeds the power of destiny. Therefore, even if it is our inborn fate, we can change it by using the law of karma. Thinking about good deeds and doing good deeds can lead to good destiny. Although human beings are governed by fate, but we can change destiny through our own good deeds. Section two: Destiny is in your own hands. Destiny is not fate; it can be changed by the law of karma. This is not from my madness, but it is from the thinker Masahiro Yasuoka, who has had a great influence on the lives of many politicians and economic people. He explained this from the summary of the book, the collection of Yin Shi. The collection of Yin Shi was compiled in the Ming Dynasty, and the book introduced the related story of Yuan Liaofan. A historical figure, Yuan Liaofan was born in a medical family, lost his father at an early age, and was raised by his mother. When he was a teenager, he inherited his ancestral career to study medicine. An old man suddenly came to visit and told him, "I am studying the book of Yi Jing, 
and I follow the destiny to teach the essence of Yi Jing, and say to his mother, maybe you want your son to become a doctor, but he would not take this path. I'm afraid that after a while, he would take the imperial examination and become an official, and predicted the fate of the boy one by one, including what kind of examinations he would take at his age. In addition, he would become local government official at a young age, very promising, but not able to have children after marriage, and died at the age of 53. After that, the life of Liao Fan was all the same as the prophecy said. One day, Liao Fan visited a famous elder and meditated with cross legs together with the elder. At that time, his thought was empty, very remarkable. Therefore, the elder was very touched and asked, It is very good that you did not have any selfish thoughts when you meditate. Where have you practiced? Liao Fan replied that he did not have any experience or practice before. He also told him about the old man he met when he was a teenager. The life I've gone through is exactly the same as the old man said. Soon, I will die at the age of 53, which is my destiny. So, I don't have any troubles now. The elder yelled at Liao Fan when he heard this. I thought you were the figure who reached the realm of awakening at a young age because of cause and effect. In fact, you are a moron. Is your life really followed exactly to your destiny? Although destiny is bestowed by God, but it is definitely not unchangeable. If you think about good deeds and do good deeds, then your future life will be able to transcend fate and change for the better one. The elder explained the lot of karma. Liao Fan listened carefully to what the elder said, and since then, he has not done any evil deeds and accumulated good deeds. As a result, he, who was predicted to be unable to have children, also had his own child, and his lifespan was much longer than the predicted age. The destiny determined by heaven can also be changed by one's own power. If you keep thinking about good things and doing good things, the lot of karma will work and you will be able to live a better life than fate. However, in real life, not many people believe in the lot of karma, and more people think this is unscientific and laugh at it. According to modern science, all of this belongs to the category of superstition. And karma is just like coaxing children in moral education, and it is said that doing bad things get retribution. Of course, the current level of science cannot prove the existence of this invisible hand. If you show good results immediately after doing good deeds, people may be convinced. However, there is no exact formula that immediately leads to a certain result from certain reason and it does not necessarily mean that you will be rewarded tomorrow if do a good things today. Moreover, like 1 plus 1 equals 2, the cause of result B must be A, but causality is rarely expressed in such a clear way. Why? As just say, the laws of destiny and karma are intertwined and govern our lives. They influence each other. For example, in the case of bad destiny, even if a little good deed is done, a small good deed is upset by a strong destiny. It will not bring good results. Similarly, in a period of great fate, even if you do a little bad thing, it will not cause bad results because of a little bad cause. Such things happen often. Section 3 be patient, cause and effect will happen in the end. The lot of karma is difficult to be seen clearly and easily believed because people only use a short time to measure and judge things. It takes time for thoughts, words, and deeds to appear as results, and it is difficult to see the results in a short time of two to three years. However, if you look at it over the long period of time, 20 or 30 years. The cause and effect are very consistent. 
It has been more than 40 years since I started my business. During this period, I've seen the rise and fall of many people. If you look at the time span of 30 to 40 years, almost all of them have experience in their lives from daily words and deeds. Karma will match the attitude of life in the end. In long run, people who are sincere and do good deeds will not always have bad luck, and those who are lazy and perfunctory will not be prosperous. Indeed, those who have done bad things may gain upper hand, while those who work hard to do good deeds may have a temporary downturn in their life. But over time, these will gradually be corrected. And eventually, will get results consistent with their own words and deeds or life attitude, and gradually approach a situation commensurate with this person. It's amazing that the reason and the result can be connected with the equal sign. This is not necessarily the case in the short term, but in the long term, good causes lead to good results. And evil causes lead to bad results. The causal relationship is very symbolic and logical. A few years ago, Kyocera Corporation once supported Mita Industry Co., a copy manufacturing company that was in trouble, and formed a new company, Kyocera Mita, to reconstruct the company. Since then, the company's performance has steadily improved and repaid the huge debts in advance. And it is now one of the pillar industry of Kyocera Group. In the reconstruction work of the company, the person who was the head of Kyocera's information equipment division at that time made a huge contribution. He served as the general manager of Kyocera Mita Corporation, responsible for the reconstruction work. And many years ago, he was a director of the new communication equipment factory. The company took advantage of the rapid development of a boom, and when the boom subsided, its performance deteriorated. After receiving a request for support, Kyocera decided to provide relief support as a member of the group. This is already more than 20 years ago. The hardship of the reconstruction is self-evident. Coupled with some radical union employees, they made various requests for this. And even broke into my home to slander me. Not only did I leave a lot of unpleasant memories, but Kyocera was also negatively affected at that time. Save a troubled company and its employee, but suffer such embarrassment, and I can only endure it. However, many employees soon understood and thanked Kyocera for their rescue and Inamori's help. One of them was the first general manager of Kyocera Mita Corporation mentioned earlier. He has changed from a person who was once rescued, and now he rescues other companies. I went from being a saved person to a person saving others. I can't help feeling the reincarnation of fate. The blessings I received at that time cannot be reciprocated by the opportunity to rebuild Kyocera Mita. I'm very happy. Upon hearing this, I also deeply felt the same. In the long run, it is still cause of reincarnation. Good deeds do not end in the form of evil results. Despite the difficulties, the reconstruction was successful in the end, and the employees are grateful. I'm sure that the cycle of good deeds would expand even more. Cai Gengtan in the Ming Dynasty in China stated that doing good without seeing the benefits is like drafting a winter melon and growing on its own. Even if the rewards are not immediately shown, it is like a wax guard in the grass. Even if it is invisible to human eye, it will still thrive. Karma takes time. Keep this sentence in mind. Don't be anxious about not having a good result for the time being. Diligently and wholeheartedly accumulate good deeds every day. They will be good results in the end. Section four: The Lord of the Universe promotes the growth of everything. Karma can be established because it conforms the law of nature. 
From a long-term perspective, good causes attract evil, and evil causes attract good results. The distortion of causal relationship would not happen. Everything good deed is rewarded for good, and evil is rewarded for evil, because that is in accordance with the law and the will of heaven. Just think about the origin of the universe. The high temperature, high pressure elementary particles had a big bang to form the universe 13 billion years ago, and it is still expanding. This is the force of the big bang from the origin of the universe, and it is almost a conclusion in current cosmic physics. The universe is like a living body. It can be said that it will grow expand endlessly. The growth process is roughly as follows. It is atoms that form matter, and the nucleus is composed of protons, neutrons, and mesons. After decomposing protons and neutrons, elementary particles are discovered. After further analysis of the substance, it is known that it has been reduced to elementary particles again. In short, at the beginning of the universe, it was first through the combination of elementary particles of the Big Bang. It took hundreds of millions of years of evolution to create advanced organisms like human beings. The so-called history of the universe can also be said to be a process of evolution from elementary particles to advanced organisms. So why did such an evolution happen? Can the original elementary particles remain as they are? In other words, you can choose to stop in the atomic phase. Then why do you continue to generate, develop, and evolve to human higher creatures without stopping for the movement? Some people think it is due to occasional overlap of factors. However, it is too unnatural to think that such tireless development and evolution are only caused by accidental factors and proceed without purpose. On the other hand, I think this is based on the will of heaven and must be formed. This kind of thinking is justified. The universe has a kind of constant will and power, or chi and energy which promotes the generation and development of all things. It is a kind of goodwill force, from living beings represented by human to eat animate, so that everything leads to the direction of goodwill. For the establishment of the karma, elementary particles do not stay in a state of elementary particle, but repeatedly combine with atoms, molecules, and macromolecules, and continue to evolve all of which are permitted by this force. To make all the all-encompassing growth and development and to guide living things to the direction of good, this is the will of the universe. In other words, the universe is full of such love and compassion. Therefore, the most important thing is to follow the big will, love and have a coordinated way of thinking and attitude towards life. Good thinking and good deeds themselves symbolize the universal will for good, so it brings good result and it is only natural to achieve excellent result. In other words, the gratitude, honesty, hard work, frankness, introspection, non-hate, caring for others, because these good thoughts and good deeds are all acts that conform the view of the universe, so it will surely lead people to success and their destiny will become better. In other words, harmony with the will or trend of the universe will determine the success or failure of life or things. The principle is very simple. The universe itself has the will to make everything better to promote the growth and development of all things that belong to it. Therefore, it is inevitable that everything in the universe will continue to grow and develop, and we humans are no exception. If the weight of thinking and life attitude are the same as the will of the universe, work and life will surely be smooth. Section 5 Great power injects life into all things in the world. Life is not the overlap of accidental factors, but the inevitable product of the will of the universe. 
This will has long existed. The aforementioned, the emeritus professor Kazuo Murakami of the University of Shukuba said something great, which clearly stated the existence of the creator. Mr. Murakami is a well-known authority on genetic research in the world. According to Mr. Murakami, after engaging in genetic research, he has to think that there's an unbelievable will at work in the universe. The so-called genetic genes, whether humans, animals, plants, or primitive organisms such as microbial enzymes or Escherichia coli, all use a code composed of four characters to write various information. What is amazing is that higher creatures like humans are also composed of information from all these four characters. Each human cell contains 3 billion genetic information. If the amount of this information is converted into the thickness of a book, they are as large as 1,000 pages thick. Among the 6 billion cells that make up human genes, each cell has been written with such a huge amount of information. What should be even more amazing is that the DNA with this genetic information is quite delicate and subtle. If all the DNA of the 6 billion people living on the earth is gathered together, it is only the weight of a grain of rice. In such a small space, such astonishing and huge information was written in an orderly manner without the slightest mass. Moreover, all living things on the earth are formed by the same genetic code composed of four characters. This is simply a miracle, and it is hard to imagine that it happened naturally because of some accidental reason. If it is not assumed that there is something great that exceeds human imagination and control the entire universe, it cannot be explained. Mr. Murakami named this existence as something great. Something great. Although I don't know what it is, it is a great existence that creates the universe and life. All kind of opinions vary from person to person. Some people say it is God. But I think it is the trend or will of the universe. Whatever it is, these are unknowable based on the limited capabilities of human beings. However, I think there must be something great. Otherwise, it cannot explain the survival and development of the universe and the mysterious and delicate life structure. We humans just borrow the vitality from this great existence and use it. That is to say, the life energy that becomes the magical hand of the Creator exists everywhere in the universe and constantly injects life into everything. This is the love and power of the universe that makes all existence alive. For example, more than 30 years ago, when Kyocera successfully synthesized recrystallized gemstone for the first time, I felt the will of the universe. This artificial gemstone, which has the same structure as natural gemstones, is made by slowly cooling the metal oxide that is exactly the same as emeralds from a high temperature state. In the cooling process, it is necessary to add small natural crystals like seeds and recultivation to recrystallize them. However, the timing of adding seeds is difficult to grasp. Too early, it will melt because of the high temperature. Too late, it won't turn well. As a result, after seven years of repeated experiments, the recrystallization was finally successfully synthesized. Putting small natural crystals at the right time and seeing them growing is like seeing the growth of life. I think there must be a kind of magical power in it. As this example shows, I feel that there is indeed an invincible mysterious force in the universe. It regards matter as a living body, so that there is life together, calm and with strong consciousness, desire, love, strength, energy. This power spreads over infinite space and becomes the source of all vitality and charge of the birth, growth 
and demise of all things. It is not only the matrix of all things and phenomenal, but also the drawing force of all things and phenomenal, the will of the universe, something great, the invisible hand of the Creator. No matter what you call it, I think because it is not only determines the success or failure of life. But also eliminates the sins of human arrogance and brings the word truths of humility and good deeds. Section six. Why did I decide to convert to Buddhism? Then, what kind of expectation does the will of the universe and the Creator make us come to this world? Why grant us only one life and let it grow and develop continuously? In other words. How can we survive to repay such a great kindness? This is a question that cannot be answered by current human wisdom, but I think there is no answer other than improving humanity. I have said many times that when you die, you must have a better and more beautiful heart than when you were born, even if it is just a little bit. In the crevice between life and death. Accumulate with true and do good. In this way, compared with the beginning of the birth, the character of the soul at the end of life must at least be improved. There is nothing more than the purpose that nature or the universe grants us to life. In the face of this greatest purpose, the property, reputation, and status established in this life are of little significance. No matter how prosperous. No matter how successful in life, no matter how much wealth you accumulate, they are as insignificant as the same dust when compared with raising your mind and soul. The will of the universe determines the ultimate goal of human life, which is to sharpen the soul. Our life is a long process of continuous cultivation and refinement of the soul. In the previous chapters, I repeatedly say how important diligence in daily life is to sharpen and improve humanity. Giving, keeping the precepts, diligence, patience, meditation, wisdom—we must constantly pay attention to these practices that summarize in the six parameters that Gautama Buddha said in our daily life, so that our souls can continue to improve. I have always felt this truth vaguely, as I said earlier. When I was 65 years old, I wanted to rethink the meaning of life and have true faith. So I decided to become a monk and convert to Buddhism. A long time ago, I thought about retiring from my current position and converting to Buddhism after I was 60 years old. But in the sixth year, when the mobile phone business was just starting up. I failed to hand over the work as I wished. At the age of 65, I thought that there could be no more delay, so I retired to the second line and served as the honorary chairman of Kyocera Corporation and DDI Corporation. Finally, fulfilled the long cherished wish. I originally divided my life into three periods, assuming the lifespan of a lifetime is 80 years. And the first two decades are the periods before being born into the world and making a living on its own. The second period is 40 years from the age of 20 to 60. It is a period of work when entering society and working hard for self-study, dedication to society, and dedication to mankind. The third period is 20 years after the age of 60, and it should be a period of preparation for. Death, so journey. Just as it takes 20 years to go to society, our body will be destroyed by death, but the soul will live forever in the world. I believe this. Death actually means the beginning of a new journey for the soul. Therefore, in the last 20 years, I reconsidered the meaning of life and prepared meticulously for the new journey. It is for the above consideration that I decided to convert to Buddhism. That's all for the sharing today. If you find value and like this video, please consider to hit the subscribe button and share. Most importantly, leave your message here and let me know what you think. I would love to read your comment and reply to your comment. I hope to see you 
in the next video.